student today will talk about the newton's formula for velocity of sound in air how newton derived the formula and what speed he got in f what are the assumption newton took into consideration that we will discuss now this newton's formula for speed of sound in air now when a uh, body is uh, set into vibrations it produces sound wave and that propagates in the medium sound is a uh, longitudinal and uh, it requires uh, medium material medium for its propagation now how fast does it move in a given medium under this consideration today we will see how fast it moves in air newton gave one formula that is called as newton's formula for velocity of sound in air now when uh, sound wave passes through a medium the medium is uh, divided into alternate uh, compressions and rarefactions the compression is uh, when the layers of air come closer rarefaction is when they are more wide apart the distance of layers will increase so when the distance increases then there is a rarefaction is formed and the region where the molecules of air come closer compression is formed newton said that uh, this compression and rarefaction that is uh, taking place uh, in the medium or air it is isothermal process okay one more point what you can talk about is that uh, he said that the propagation of uh, sound waves in uh, air is isothermal process that means what that uh, temperature you must know about uh, isothermal process is that process in which the temperature remains constant this is a process where temperature remains constant so he says that when uh, compression is formed the molecules come closer heat is generated and during uh, expansion any rarefaction cooling occurs so alternate compression and rarefaction compression and rarefaction will generate uh, heat and then it cools down then heat and cools down so the process has to be he said that process has to be isothermal process and uh, the air uh, during compression whatever the heat it gathers it uh, releases those uh, heat and uh, keep the temperature constant similarly during the uh, rarefaction it cools down so it takes uh, heat uh, from outside and uh, keeps the temperature same so what uh, newton says is this is compression this is rarefaction this is again compression and rarefaction so on he says that uh, by the when the compression is formed heat is generated here here heat is generated here cooling occurs okay cooling occurs in rarefaction heat is generated in compression now he says that the temperature remains constant he says that the extra heat that is generated is uh, given to given to is uh, given out to the surrounding is given out in the place where compression is formed the extra heat is given out and it maintains the 
temperature constant. It uh, releases heat. Similarly, during uh, reflection, it uh, absorbs heat and uh, maintains the temperature constant. Here it uh, absorbs heat. Now, based on these assumptions, Newton wrote the formula and it is as follows. He says that uh, the velocity, we know that the velocity of sound, which is a longitudinal wave, is uh, under root E by density under root e by density that we have already discussed so we'll write the formula and proceed that the velocity of sound being longitudinal wave is uh, the elastic constant of the medium divided by the density and its root okay now this uh, Rho is the density of uh, the medium and the medium we have chosen is L. L is the medium and uh, is the elastic constant. Now we have to, okay, density of air might be 1.29 something. Okay. But then uh, you have to find the value of uh, elastic constants for uh, gas. Air is gases. So you have to find the E for gas. The elastic constant for uh, or the bulk modulus of uh, gas, this is a bit definitely your bulk modulus, E is uh, bulk modulus and uh, the bulk modulus for uh, gas or air is that uh, is represented as uh, K bulk modulus is found to be P, P means the pressure. Okay. For the uh, bulk for air, the bulk modulus is found to be pressure of the medium. This is the case that bulk modulus or E equals to K, or that is called the pressure of the medium, only one under one condition that is if T is constant. That means if the process the when sound travels in air if you assume or you believe that uh, the process is uh, under uh, constant temperature if the temperature is constant then only the bulk modulus will be equal to pressure only under this condition the temperature remaining constant now we have to find the bulk modulus for air bulk modulus of air under temperature constant process that is isothermal process can be found as follows though the derivation part is not there still will derive in case of uh, ideal gas equation or uh, the equation of gas uh, we have we, we know that because uh, air is also a gas, so for gas uh, we are using this equation PV equals to NRT. Okay. Now, if temperature is constant, because R is always constant, N is constant in a given medium. If temperature is constant, so there are three factors is constant, then you write PV is constant. So when temperature is constant, it is PV equals to constant. This equation is called the isothermal equation. This condition is called isothermal condition. So Newton believed isothermal process. So he said that when uh, this uh, the air passes through, when the sound passes through air, the process is isothermal process. So I will use the equation P V is equal to constant or K. Some C say. Okay. I will use the equation P V equals to C. Now what is bulk modulus? How bulk modulus is defined? Bulk modulus is defined like this. E or K, whatever you are using. This is a common notation for uh, elastic constants. For uh, bulk modulus, we write suppose K. That uh, bulk modulus is uh, defined as change in pressure divided by change in volume upon original volume. 
this is called uh, volumetric uh, stress and this is called uh, volumetric strain this is stress this is strain but we don't have to understand what is stress and what is strain but uh, for the time being uh, this is the formula for k we are interested in k so k is something you just remember the change in pressure divided by change in volume divided by volume so this is called that means v this will come up v delta p by delta v is called bulk modulus now how to get uh, this uh, value from this equation then uh, we have to think of that now let us find the e that is b e or k how to find that k now uh, newton says that is uh, isothermal process so i will write pv equals to c this is isothermal equation pv equals to constant Boyle's law is also isothermal. Now I differentiate this equation with respect to P or V. So it is uh, say P uh, dV plus V dP equals to 0. If you differentiate this with respect to say P or V, whatever, so it will be the situation. Then uh, P D V equals to minus V D P or P equals to minus V D P divided by D V. Bulk model is also negative of that. Bulk model is also defined like that because the increase in pressure is followed by decrease in volume. If uh, I apply pressure, the pressure increases, the volume of the object, the size of the object will decrease. So there is always a negative here. So, as you can see here, negative V D delta P divided by delta V, which is here. This whole thing is here. Therefore, the pressure is found to be, this is your E or K. So, what Newton wrote, that in place of E in this expression, he put P is the pressure of the medium. That is the atmospheric pressure. Because some travels in a normal atmospheric pressure in air, the pressure uh, at the time when the sound is traveling, we assume that it is normal atmospheric pressure. So we replace this uh, E by P there and substitute that and find the value of speed. Now, it's V equals to E divided by rho. Next is this E becomes P that we derive now divided by density take the root. Now, in the fluid mechanics, we derived this, uh, understood about how to find the pressure of atmosphere, that is a uh, mercury barometer is used and that uh, we found there and the formula was found to be in viscosity chapter or in fluid, um, fluid mechanics, this uh, pressure is found to be, atmospheric pressure is found to be density of mercury, acceleration due to gravity and the height of the mercury column. One atmospheric pressure, the height of the mercury column will be 76 centimeter. The acceleration due to gravity will take 9.8 and the density of mercury is uh, nearly 13,600. Okay. So putting all those, uh, we will uh, then uh, find the value. So, P is a rho density of mercury, G and height of column divided by the density of the medium in which the sound wave is traveling. This is the density of air. Okay. Now, putting uh, all the ready made uh, values, this uh, H is uh, found to be 0 0.76 meter. This G is found to be 9.8 uh, meter per second square. The density is found to be, density of mercury is found to be 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. Okay. These are all standard and known values. So substituting and putting those values and the density of uh, air obviously. Okay. Density of air is uh, Now, the density of uh, air 
is uh, around 1.293 data density value to substitute here obviously that uh, should be in a kilogram per meter cube because density is mass upon volume so it is kilogram per meter cube substituting these values over here what you get if you put these values you'll get uh, 13600 into 9.8 into 0 0.76 divided by 1.293 under root so under root of uh, 13600 into 9.8 and this finally if you solve this you'll get uh, around uh, 279.9 or around 280. This is the formula Newton got for the speed of sound in air. Now, but experimentally it was believed that the speed of sound was found to be around 300. Uh, 30 or 335 something so it is around 330 plus but here it is uh, 280 meter per second so it is uh, uh, having more uh, error around uh, you find around it will be 16 percent error than the experimental value so there must be something wrong and then came a scientist called Laplace who corrected the Newton formula for speed of sound that we'll discuss in the next video how Laplace modified or corrected the Newton's formula. Okay, thank you.